Welcome to Bible Study with Friends. Uh, I'm here with my friend Zach Hunt. Um, uh, good morning, or good, good morning. afternoon, or good evening, yeah. depending upon where you are. <laughs> it's good afternoon for me. <laughs> that, Zach and I have been meeting for quite some time and, and doing Bible studies, and uh, we decided to uh, start a new study and let you in on it. Uh, if this is uh, you're new to our channel, uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoy what you're seeing, and that way you'll get every uh, new study as we go through this playlist of uh, Bible study with friends. We're going to be doing the book of Malachi. We're going to be in the ESV, although you can follow along in any version. Um, and um, Zach and I are going to be sharing, and uh, you get to be a fly on the wall and sit in on our Bible study. So welcome. Hit the little bell if you want to be uh, receive an email every time we do a new video. Uh, you'll receive an email that way. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Zach. Good afternoon, Zach. Good evening, whatever. We don't know. Uh, Zach and I are both uh, sequestered, and uh, we are enjoying Bible study together separately. And... Uh, going to get into a new study on Malachi. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Uh, this is going to be great. Now, Malachi, if you have a hard time finding it, if you go to the book of Matthew, first book of the New Testament, and turn left, uh, Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament and fairly easy to find. Uh, what we're going to do, let me give you some background, first of all, uh, Zach to malachi did you did you have a chance to do any research have you looked into malachi at all uh i've studied the book once but i i don't think i got as much background as you're about to tell me <laughs> okay well that's um, okay yeah um the, the the book is written about 435 bc um now in in the time frame of this just so that we can place what's going on uh in the history of israel um the the 70 year captivity of babylon has ended and they israel has been back in 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 israel uh has been back in jerusalem and in the city uh for about a hundred years uh and what's happening is they're they're under the protection if you recall from your bible history when uh when Ezra, Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, when they came back and rebuilt the city, they did that under the protection. And really, in fact, uh, at one point, they even used government money from the government of Persia uh, with, uh, with guys like Cyrus and Artaxerxes uh, actually giving them permission to build and sending uh, Persian money to help them rebuild. Uh, and that was obviously because of the influence of Daniel uh, and uh, the impression that he made on uh, Nebuchadnezzar and, and on, uh, on uh, Darius. Uh, but uh, it's been about 100 years, and they've been safe. They've been protected by Persia for 100 years. That's 435 B.C. And um, what's happening in Israel is they've been back and kind of comfortable for 100 years. And in a lot of ways, it's like uh, America. Uh, we've been kind of at peace uh, for many, many years, for, uh, you know, 100 years plus. Um, ex I'm ta not talking about the world war. I'm talking about war in our country. Uh, and we get kind of lax. We start to take God for granted and uh, for granted, not granite. Never mind. No, I've looked um, it up and apparently people, people allow both ways to say it, but I don't understand what the granted means. Yeah, <laughs> the granite means. means. <laughs> uh, we, uh, but, uh, we can get comfortable. Uh, and as Christians, as, as Christ followers, uh, if we're not careful, we can become comfortable. Now, 
before the virus and before social distancing and before uh, quarantining where we couldn't meet, uh, very often we might start to consider church as just kind of a thing to do and uh, uh, being involved in church is just kind of a social activity and it's just kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this book, the book of Malachi really addresses uh, the reality of what we should be thinking compared to what we are thinking. So it really is an Old Testament book, but it applies to us today. And as we go through this book, we're going to be asking ourselves some serious questions. And one of the th interesting things about Malachi is the format. It's a very unique book in that God, God sets up the, the kind of the formula for how it's written. And we'll see this as soon as, as we start reading. God, God will give a little proclamation or Malachi will give a little proclamation. And then there's a rhetorical question that the people would ask. And a lot of times that rhetorical question about the teaching is kind of, it can be kind of snarky, or it can be um, um, irreverent, uh, let's put it that way. But they respond to what God has said, and then God goes into a teaching based upon their question. And sometimes he'll ask them a question, sometimes it's just a teaching on it. But that teaching always, always, always involves a prophecy about something that's going to happen in the future based on his teaching and based on their response to it, and then based upon his response to their response. And that's kind of a formula we're going to see through the whole book of Malachi, and we can watch for it. We can watch for it. God makes a statement, they ask a question, God teaches on that question, and then ends that teaching with a prophecy. Uh, I've gone through, and as we go through our Bible, I've gone through and marked all the, 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 the prophecy. Now, how you tell that is, if I was going to give prophecy, what verbs would I use? Um, you know, foresee or will happen, something in will. the future. Yeah. <laughs> and so we can watch in the book of Malachi for any time God is speaking and he says, this will happen. That's a prophecy. It's about something that's going to happen in the future. So as we go through, uh, we can do that. Now, you and I, using this background and watching for this, uh, God is going to kind of address the whole hums of three groups. Um, the priests, kind of the whole hum attitude of the priests, and the whole hum attitude of the people, and even the whole hum attitude of some Gentiles who are not Jews but are uh, around. And he's going to address those three uh, groups. Now it's interesting uh, from Scripture. I'm going to show you uh, here on our on our. Um... Am I recording? Yeah, I did. Okay, I'm recording. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got all, all excited. I want to show you a page uh, from my introduction here that, uh, that we are all three of these groups. That we are, um, let, me, let me find that, that page. There you go, right here. In these notes, look at this note here. In, in a real sense, you and I, Zach, are, we are God's people. So when, when Malachi is addressing the people of Israel, God's people, in a real way, he's addressing that. In fact, get a chance, turn to Galatians chapter 3, 29. Can you turn to that for me? Yeah. And read, read Galatian, Galatians uh, 3, 29. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. 
So basically, Paul makes the point in Galatians that if you are followers of Christ, if you're Christians, you are grafted in, you are, um, if you want to say honorary, yes, but you are the people of God. So in Malachi, when he starts to address the people of God, in a real sense, that's something we can take and say, that applies to me as a Christian. Uh, if he's warning the people of God, that's something that's a warning to me as a Christian. Now, the other group that's addressed is God's priests. When he starts to talk to the priests, uh, look up First Timothy. Or, sorry, First Peter, chapter two, verse nine and ten. First Peter, two, nine and ten. I'm going to put you to work. Sure. Um... <laughs> says, but you are a chosen, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once so, you were not a people. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Finish. Yeah, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Okay, so he, Peter now, the first one was Galatians was from Paul. Now Peter is saying, if you're Christians, you are God's people, but not just God's people. As Christians, you are literally priests of God. Uh, you're, you're there to function as a priesthood, okay? We are a royal priesthood as Christians. So in the book of Malachi, when he's talking to priests and he's giving warnings to priests and he's, and he's talking about the, the essence of being a priest, that's something that as a New Testament believer, I can say, oh, I need to think about that as applying to me as a Christian priest of God. Yeah. So that's, that's another spot that, that, uh, that we have. Now, the last group is the nations. When he's talking about the nations, that's us. I mean, that's, I, I don't have a specific verse, but anytime you're talking about the nations in the scriptures, uh, it's talking about people other than the Jews. So you've got the you've got two kinds of people: the Jews and everybody else. Okay, yeah. and yeah. and if you're not Jewish, uh, if you weren't raised uh, Jewish, then you are technically a Gentile. You are of the of the nations. Okay, so for example, the Abrahamic covenant. Uh, that's given uh, in the Abrahamic covenant. If you remember, God says to Abram, I'm going to make you a great nation. And through you, I'm going to bless the nations of the world. So right then he sets up, there's two nations. One is the nation yeah. of Israel, mm -hmm. of which we as Christians are honorary members, right? Yeah. And the nations of Gentiles. Now, the scriptures talks about the nations as two different groups. You can be a Gentile believer and be part of the nations that is not a natural born Jew. Mm -hmm. But if you're a Gentile who believes, as many of the Gentiles that, that worked with Paul um, uh, were, uh, you are also a uh, of God's people and you're a Gentile. So you're of the nations and of God's people. So in, in a real sense, when it's talking here in, in this verse, we are the nations. So when there's really no section of Malachi that's not left out where if it's addressing God's people, we are God's people. If it's addressing God's priests, we are God's priests. So it's, it's, uh, it's moments of teaching that we get here. Now, some other things to notice. In, in history, Israel went into the Babylonian captivity because of, of idolatry. They started worshiping other gods. They started following them. And God said, okay, I'm going to judge you. And you see that message in, in Jeremiah and even Isaiah that I'm going to judge the nation and I'm going to take them into captivity as a judgment to teach them 
not to be idolatrous. So th during this hundred years they've been back, they're not idolatrous. They're not going after other gods. They are worshiping God. But the problem is they are becoming very lax in the way they're worshiping God. Now, I've given you some verses down here. I'm going to put this in the recording so you've got it in your notes. But the future events of prophecy uh, are the questions about these events and the answers that are prophecy happen in, in chapter 1, verse 2, chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, chapter 2, verse 14 and 17, and chapter 3 in verse 7, 8 and 13. And there's only four chapters, so you'll see that the whole fourth chapter is all prophecy. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, a couple of keys uh, before we get into the actual word. Look at Malachi chapter 2, verse 5. There are two key verses in the book that we're going to come across. One key verse is in chapter 2, verse 5. Go ahead and read that. It says, uh, My covenant with him was one of life and peace, and I gave, him, I, I gave them to him. It was a covenant of fear, and he feared me. He stood in awe of my name. Okay. Now, that word fear in the Hebrew is not, not fright. It's not scared. Fear is reverence. He, reverent, he revered me, and, he, and, he, um, and I gave him a covenant for the sake of being revered. Okay? Being worshipped. Now, that's a key verse because... One of the things that, that Malachi, the book, is going to talk about is irreverence. That is the lack of rev revering God, the lack of fearing God, okay? Uh, that's where we get the term God-fearing people. We're, we're, we're not afraid of God, but we revere him, we worship him. Now, the other key verse to the whole book of Malachi is chapter 3, verse 7. Uh, from the days of your fathers, uh, yeah. from the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of Hosts. But you say, how shall we return? There's that rhetorical question, and we're going to cover that when we study okay. that deal. But, but here's the reason: these are two key verses. Is first, it sets up the issue of the book is irreverence. And the second, the, the goal of the book is to get people to think about their irreverence and to repent and come back to a reverent attitude towards God. And that's really, in fact, there's a key word that we're going to see, the word Lord, which is, means the supreme one, the one in control, is used 47 times in four chapters. So you'd say, okay, this is really about the reverent lordship of God in your life. Yeah. Now, the other opening notes that I would have would be, um, I want to give you a kind of a um, an outline of the book. Uh, let me go back here to this page. We're going to use this outline, Zach, to study the book. Um, we're going to study Malachi from the aspect of it is a reality check for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. The, the, it starts out with, it's a reality check about your grace. And we can say about our grace. Okay. But if I'm, if I'm studying the book of Malachi for myself, I'm going to be looking at this as this is a reality ch check for my grace. Okay. Yep. That's from, from, verse 1 to verse 5 of chapter 1, and then a reality check about worship. Uh, uh, for me to ask a question about the reality of my worship, okay? And that's from chapter 1, verse 6 to chapter four to, to verse 14. Then a reality check on our ministry. And every believer needs to have some kind of personal ministry to somebody. Could be our family, could be anybody, uh, but this is a reality check about how we think about our personal ministry, and then a reality check on our relationships. This is going to be our wives, our neighbors, uh, people in our society. There's a reality check. So you see how this starts to become um, 
very, very uh, realistic to today. These are issues yeah. of the day for yeah. us. A reality check of, of your accountability goes from chapter 2, verse 17, all the way down to chapter 3, verse 6. Our accountability to, to others and our accountability to God. In other words, you, you can't just do whatever you feel like and expect God to bless you. Sure. There is an accountability, and there's a reality check about that accountability. Then we're going to do a reality check about our giving, our giving of, our, of ourselves and our giving of our money. And then a reality check of our salvation in chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. And then a reality check on your promises. So you could go through, uh, and in your Bible, let's go to a page here. I've got in my notes, the first thing is, uh, the first section addresses the priests. So yeah. from chapter 1, verse 1 to chapter 2, verse 9, God is addressing the priests through Malachi. Now we know we're we are the priests, so we can pay attention here. We don't say, oh, this is for pastors or this is for the you know somebody else. This is something for us. And we can see that as part one. And then underneath that is this section from verse one to verse five. I've got bracketed and I say it's a reality check on our grace. You see that there? Yeah, yeah. So this is the way I'm using my notes to help me keep track of what we're talking about and where we are. Yeah, great. Now, an interesting thing about the, the book of Malachi, if you look up in the Hebrew what Malachi means, and here's where scholars kind of have a, um, a thing going on, because Malachi, the word Malachi means my messenger. So we don't know, like right here it says, the oracle of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Well, in the Hebrew, basically what that says is the word of the, the oracle of the word of the Lord to Israel, my messenger. So we don't know, and scholars don't know, uh, if Malachi is a person of history, uh, because there's nothing about his parentage that doesn't say Malachi, son of whatever. Yeah. So there's nothing about his personage, and there's there, and it could very well be that all it means is this is the word of the Lord from a guy who I have sent. So we're going to find out at the end when he starts starts talking about uh, the Messiah is my Malachi. It's my messenger. It's exactly the same word either way. So that's an interesting thing. Now, I want to talk about this first verse, and then we're going to stop for this week, okay? And then next okay. week, we're going to get into the first five verses at least. We'll probably do uh, uh, the, the reality check of our grace and our worship, but let's do this. This first verse, the oracle of the word of the Lord. Now, what does oracle mean? You have you have any idea? Uh, no, actually, maybe a message. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's funny as when we're studying the Bible, we need to to stop just reading it and yeah. start asking ourselves the question of, well, I've read that ver that word a hundred times. What does it mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. and and. Even to the point of, I mean, a good Bible study tool is you get yourself a Webster's Dictionary and look up what does Oracle mean. Sure. Um, yeah. Now, in the Hebrew, it's interesting, and I've hit it in my notes. This is how I've, this is how I remember this. The word Oracle means heavy load. Okay. And that's literally what the Hebrew word means, heavy load. Now, I've got two examples, so get your Bible ready. This is kind of a sword drill here. Okay. I want you to look up Z Zechariah, not Zechariah, but Zechariah. The, the next test to see if you can find Zechariah. <laughs> well, isn't it just to the, just to the left of Malachi? Right? Yep. Go to yeah. Zechariah <laughs> chapter 9, 
verse 1. And we're going to see this same word used. Go ahead. The oracle of the word of the Lord is against the land of Hadarak. Okay. Now, if you're reading another version like New American Standard or some other version, it could very well say the burden. Because that literally is what it means. It's a, it's a heavy load or a, or a burden. And what, what this basically means, look, look over at Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. The oracle of the word of the Lord concerning Israel. Okay, so basically this is, God is giving Zechariah a burden to tell Israel a message. Yeah. That's what oracle means. It means somebody has laid on you a burden or a load that you need to share. It's, a, it's almost like I, I have a compulsion. I've got to share this. God has given it to me, and I've got to share it with you. Yeah. yeah. So the book of Malachi, back to verse 1, is literally the burden of, of what, what's coming from God. It's a burden of the word of the Lord to Israel, okay. to us yeah. as believers. So we could say, oh, if it's to Israel, it's to the Jews, yes, but it's also to Christians because we are the Israel, okay? We're grafted in. Yep. So we can yep. say Malachi, God's messenger, is burdened to give what God has got to say to us. And I've made a note here, whether it's a, the title of the book or a person doesn't make any difference at all. Whether this is a person named Malachi who's talking to us, or whether it's, uh, I've got a heavy load uh, of what God has got to say to Israel. And that, that word literally means utterance. So this is, I'm burdened for what the utterance of God. This would be like, for example, I'm doing a Bible study and I see something really cool in the scriptures that blesses me from the word. And I've got a burden. I, I want to call Zach and share it with Zach. Say, hey, Zach, I got an oracle for you uh, from, from this verse. And that literally is what I'm saying is I'm, I'm burdened to share this with you. Yeah. And so what we see, and then I wanted to show you here in the, uh, in the ESV, there's a, little, there's a little number. And if you go down to the bottom of the page right here, that number says Malachi means my messenger. Yep. So I wasn't lying to you there, see? Yeah, mine says the same thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I believe you. All right, there you go. So you believe me because there's proof, there's written proof. There is. All yeah. right, let's stop here. Um, Zach and uh, we've been we've been talking long enough and uh, and recording this. I wanted to uh, let's go back to uh, to us on screen. Thank you so much for participating in this Bible study. It's going to be a great Bible study. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to go through these things and we're going to ask when it talks about a reality check of grace. We're going to say, Hey, do I get it? Do I get yeah. this grace? Do I really understand that? And it's point by point, it's something we can check. Yeah. So it's a great Bible study, and I'm excited about sharing it with you and, and doing it with you. We're going to pick up next week at, uh, we'll, we'll pick up at verse 2 okay. uh, next week and uh, go right along in a reality check. Okay, my friend? Okay. Thanks, Len. Let me, uh, let me uh, end this in prayer. Okay. Father, I just want to thank you for... Uh, not only Zach tuning in, but also for uh, anyone, anyone who's watching this Bible study. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you that this is a burden from God's word that we can share with, with uh, believers, non-believers, Jews, Gentiles. This is a message from you, from your word to all of us. And Father, we pray that you bless not only uh, the message we've just talked about, all the introduction but also bless us as we're going into this Bible study. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to stop recording. Thank you so much.